There is but one supreme mind of the universe. This mind is universal consciousness. The universal consciousness is the cause of the physical world. All of the world results from thought. Gautama Buddha once remarked, all that we are is a result of what we have thought. This idea is often rejected by many so-called rational thinkers who insist that the world of thought and the world of matter are completely separate. They maintain that the idea of a universal creative mind is simply some philosophical or religious fancy. However, nothing can be further from the truth. Although the universal mind is indeed the reality that has been symbolized as the creator God by many religions and spiritual traditions since the beginning of civilization, it is also a reality that is heavily grounded in science. In fact, the idea of a universal creative mind is the central tenet of quantum theory. Now, if for some reason you've been buried under a rock since 2000 or the late 90s and haven't heard of the term quantum, I'm going to tell you, quantum theory is the study of the very small. The word quantum means indivisible unit. It is a system or a part of energy that cannot be broken down any further. The quanta was first theorized by physicist Max Planck. Max Planck won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1918 for his discovery of the quantized nature of energy. For that reason, Max Planck is considered to be the father of quantum theory. Before Max Planck, um, scientists thought that light and energy was a continuous stream. But it was Planck who discovered that energy was quantized, meaning that energy, even light, was broken down into small, discrete, indivisible units. Um, the best way for me to describe it would be kind of like a paint atomizer on a car. You know, if you've ever painted the cars, I had to explain this to my buddy, Anthony McCarley, when we were detailing Harleys. Back in the day, I told him that light quantization, as theorized by Max Planck, was very similar to the atomizing feature or characteristic of a paint gun, in that the paint doesn't just spray, but it atomizes. So what you have are tiny, almost microscopic pellets of paint falling in line behind one another in succession. A little ball of paint, boom, 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 like that. You see, that ensures a, a smooth, even coat of paint. Reality works much the same way because as light emanates from the Planck length, as light emanates from the subatomic structure outward, it does so in a quantum fashion. Now, Max Planck had discovered all this by investigating the very small, and this led him to some very interesting thoughts concerning the nature of matter and the nature of physical reality itself. In 1944, at a physics conference in Florence, Italy, Planck said these words, and I quote, as a man who has devoted his whole life to the most clear-headed science, that is, to the study of matter, I can tell you, as a result of my research about atoms this much, there is no matter as such. All matter originates and exists by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds the most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of a conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. End quote. Now, that's a pretty deep quote. Let's look at it. I'm, I'm going to break it down because what we have here is one of the greatest physicists of all time. You know, Planck, he's not quite Einstein, but if you take Einstein and then everyone beneath him, he's right there beneath Einstein, you know, with Bohr and Schrodinger, Richard Feynman. All these guys are great luminaries 
of, of quantum theory. Uh, Heisenberg, these guys are the ones that basically pave the future for humanity with regards to technological and scientific innovation. You know, Planck was a great genius. And even more, he was an incredibly independent thinker. Because in his day and age, you know, the idea of light and, and matter being quantized, that, that was just heresy against the established scientific paradigms of the time. You know, he had to go against the conventional wisdom. But sure enough, he was right. He's the creme de la creme of quantum theorists. And what you have him saying is, he is a man and he's devoted his entire life to what he deems is a very clear-headed science. You know, the study of matter, the study of things that actually exist. And then he tells you that as a result of his research about atoms, that there is no matter. There's no matter as such. And when he says as such, he means that there is nothing that is tangible and exists on its own as a result of its tangibility. There is no objective matter per se. He says all matter originates and exists by virtue of a force that is backed by mind. That means that mind is both the source and the sustaining factor to matter. Think about that for a minute. Mind, universal mind, is both the source, meaning it is where matter comes from, and the sustaining factor, it is what keeps matter together. Mind is both of these things. Now, that's, that's, that's just, you know, a total echo of uh, great Buddhist and Hindu spiritual traditions. And we'll, we'll get into that a little deeper later. But for now, we're going to stick clearly to the scientific postulate by some of the world's great quantum theorists that mind itself is universal and that mind is the source and the sustainer of the physical world.